Did you know that if you send a family member as a diplomat multiple times in a row to a nation, they will eventually give you a settlement for free? Of course, only for factions you have peace with, and only factions with multiple settlements. This actually happened to me in a Rome campaign that I played recently, which I certainly did not expect. After the Veneta expanded, I managed to get a free Patavium, as I was sending diplomat after diplomat to them. Also, if you have vassals, you are likely to receive a gift of money on a diplomatic mission, or other good stuff, but mostly money. I was actually able to farm around 25,000 gold in the early game just by sending diplomats. Not to mention all the other benefits you get through leveling up characters. However, be wary of that, as your diplomat may not return at all, as one faction, not mentioning any names, Carthage, murdered my in-game wife, whilst she was out on a mission. I got my revenge there. My roleplay mega campaign starting tomorrow for Rome 2 is going to be so good. Welcome to things I wish I knew earlier about Rome 2 Total War, and you may know all of these, and if so, then good for you. This video is just some interesting things that I never knew about the game, uh, you know, in the earlier days, but I wish I did know them, you know, much earlier. And who knows, some of you may learn something also. How do I place equipment? I have 100 hours in Rome 2 and over 500 in Attila, yet I never figured out how to place equipment. I tried so many methods, but it never worked. Turns out you just select the equipment that you want and then right click and drag it onto the battle map. And here I was trying to like, you know, actually left click on the equipment itself and drag it onto the unit in position. Uh, how? I cannot believe I did not figure that out sooner. Just here making myself look dumb and useless on my own video. However, that being said, it does never actually tell you how to place it. So, you know, maybe a lot of people out there also do not know. This is just something out of interest, nothing that I need to know, but in Rome Total War, only Egypt could recruit missile camo archers. Whereas in Rome 2, they cannot exactly recruit them on the campaign, only custom battles, but mostly every other eastern faction can. This is super weird, it's like the complete opposite. It's because they can only be recruited in stables, but Egypt does not have access to the stables in their building browser. What they need to do is capture an enemy stable, that has a pre-built stable in there. Even Rome gets access to auxiliary camel archers. Rome 2 pikemen are so bad, nowhere near how they were in Rome 1. Well, there is a secret to making them better, and that is to click on the enemy unit that you are attacking multiple times over. This forces the pike unit to push forwards, despite keeping in formation meaning that they push their pikes into their enemies and begin to get actual kills, and act like pikemen. Next, the large eastern settlements come with a building that also acts like a wall, as in units can walk on top of it and interact with it. I wish there was more stuff like this in the game. This is great, and I really could have done with knowing this for a few recent campaigns of mine. Not only that, but small stuff like this makes the game so much more interesting, and I wish I knew it early because of that. This last one here was sending me crazy, and I am so happy that I found out how to get rid of this, yet it took me many hours. That stupid left click to move units, I would spend my time getting troops into the perfect setup, and then suddenly, due to the left click, 
I would end up throwing them halfway across the map. It took me hours to figure out what it was. I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was right clicking by accident. It took me forever to try and figure out how to get rid of it as well. I was even searching for mods to try and solve this but could not find any. And it almost turned me off the game altogether. Options, battle interface, disable, left, click, drag. What a dumb idea it was to have it in there, but I'm happy I fixed it. And it was in the options all along, which I did search, but I'm guessing I did not search battle interface. <sighs> also, battle difficulty cannot be altered in the main menu when you go to start your campaign. It has to be done in the options separately. What even is the point? Now, of course, you know, these two have known for quite a while at this point. I'm not that stupid, but for my first one or two campaigns, I could have done with knowing this earlier. You know, they, they don't make it clear, and it does become quite annoying, in my opinion. Wow. Now I'm angry. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Please do share the video with anyone else who you think may be interested in it. It really helps me out and makes the research that I put into these much more worthwhile. Also, if you are interested in my Rome 2 Divide et et Impera roleplay campaign as Rome starting tomorrow, then please feel free to subscribe to get notified. It's also a mega campaign where it will continue into Attila Total War and then Medieval 1212 AD with the same roleplay story. And you, the viewers, are the Senate who gets to vote on the campaign's future. Anyway, I've been Melkor, and until the next one, goodbye.